Coming up next is Best Life Interviews with Larry Langston and our interesting and informative guests. You will take away Kingdom Living insights when you stay tuned for Best Life Interviews. Welcome to Best Life Interviews, and I'm delighted to be bringing to you our guest today from Smith County, Texas. Blake Hickenbotham tells me that that he lives in Smith County, which is located between Tyler and Longview, Texas. Blake, it's so good to have you here with us today. Thank you for coming on Best Life Interviews. Larry, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm looking forward to our time together. Well, Blake, you're a no stranger to ministry. You have been writing music, you've been performing, you've been preaching, you've been teaching, you've traveled throughout the world for decades now, and now you're ministering through Apostolic Kingdom Alliance. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and your past, and then we'll come back and talk about Apostolic Kingdom Alliance. I, I quit keeping score on, on how long I've been in the ministry because that's kind of a kind of a telltale, but uh, it is 50 plus years, but my <laughs> wife and I of, of almost 40 years now have uh, served most of that time in apostolic ministry. And we've recently, within the last couple of years, uh, were sent to East Texas as emissaries to help his sons to discover the purpose for which they were born. Uh, we have traveled to several countries, uh, Mexico, Belize, Haiti, and my wife uh, actually was uh, blessed. To, uh, I was blessed to have my wife come with me to India two different times. But wow. uh, we've traveled. Uh, we've traveled a lot in the United States. Well back in the 80s and uh and and still go where we're sent and uh, work where we're received and stay where we're loved <laughs> well that's an ex exciting way to go forward in ministry now we met last year um in uh, north carolina papa dunn atkin had a gathering of uh, ministries and we were talking about ecclesia and I met you there, and it was a pleasure to make your acquaintance. You know a number of people that I've known for a long time, and so now we have, are developing relationship. But you, I heard you performing music and uh, singing there in that conference, and I actually came up to you and told you, you have a really good voice. <laughs> I appreciate that, Brother Larry. Uh, we have a mutual friend, of Jim Beckton. I don't know if he'll be you know, embarrassed for me to mention his name, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, I've known of Jim for a long time, and we finally got to meet here recently. Uh, actually, this year, he came to my house and for a Higginbotham, uh, grillish, uh, Higginbotham House Grillicious Cookout that we were hosting, and there were several states represented here for that gathering, and uh, we had a wonderful time of fellowship. And then I had already planned to go to North Carolina and, and discovered that he was going to be a part of the North Carolina gathering. And um, of course, Don Atkin uh, hosted that over uh, on Lake Douglas in the Charlotte area. And it was just, just an awesome time together. But uh, meeting you, I, I, really, I really didn't get to sit down and talk to you while we were at the conference. And so I regretted it, and I told my wife that I fully well intend to call or to email him and talk to him and uh, see if we can't connect at a deeper level because you are a fellow Texan, and, uh, you know, the state of Texas is big, but it's not too big for us to get together. <laughs> well, we were talking the other day about the fact that the world has gotten so small in some ways. We still marvel at God's creation and his handiwork. And yet, um, regularly, we're communicating with people 10,000 miles away. And, of course, it's not that far to Longview, but we have this amazing technology to minister together and touch people around the world and communicate as we are today. And I can just often, I imagine, the Apostle Paul, if there's any frustration in heaven, it has to be when he sees what we're doing and he thinks about writing his epistles from a Roman jail but, you know, on the other hand, he used what he had of the day to communicate to others. He wrote those epistles. He wrote those letters to the churches and the messengers, took them to the church, and they read them to congregation after congregation. And I'm sure he would have loved to do what we're doing today. But on the other hand, he did the best with what he had, right? 
in, in, in context, I've thought about that uh, quite often, how blessed we've been to have the freedom of mobility and run the tires off of vehicles and <laughs> multiple vehicles and, and uh, take planes uh, everywhere we go and things of that nature. But, you know, most of their ministry was conducted within walking distance or, or if it wasn't walking distance, they took ships across uh, bodies of water to get to places. But uh, most people don't really think too much about the local and regional fellowship of the body of Messiah. And I've begun to concentrate on uh, both local and regional fellowship uh, and, and, and not only of the body, but of the brotherhood. And I'm looking to connect uh, heart to heart with some local elders and regional leaders, specifically within three to a half day's journey from where I live. And I, we, my wife and I don't do a lot of extensive travel anymore. And we, if it just, the, 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 just the reality that it is difficult physically to travel long distances and uh, the financial aspects of traveling in this day and hour, we just decided that we're going to really concentrate and focus our attention on, uh, on reaching the people of our area and um, serving the body of Messiah in this region and uh, trying to help a few brothers along the way. Absolutely. Well, on your card, Apostolic Kingdom Alliance, coming together in him for his greater kingdom purpose. Talk about that for just a moment. Well, as uh, you know, I've had several names, <laughs> like us all, if you've been in this, if you've been in the ministry for 50 plus years, you, you start somewhere. And I, I wanted to talk about that for a few minutes because uh, my walk in the Lord, when it, when we first started on June 14th, 1970, about 545 in the evening, I remember the day, the time, and the moment. Wow. I won't go into that part of my testimony wow. yet. <laughs> uh, my walk with him started uh, at, uh, on that day of night, June 14th, 1970, about 545 in the evening. From that time until now, of course, a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have, have gotten better. But uh, there's one thing that remains true. Uh, there's nothing like that first encounter, that first experience, that uh, being coming to a saving knowledge of the truth. And shortly thereafter, in the basement of an old fashioned Pentecostal church in Ritter, Louisiana, receiving the infilling of Holy Spirit. My, the first part of my walk was really and there's four phases of a man's walk in the Lord that I've learned over the years. One, the first phase was all about me. The second okay. phase was all about me and the Lord. The third phase was all about the Lord and me. Okay. And the fourth phase is which I'm in right now is all about him. Okay. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, because it's a, it's a, it's a dying and a living process all along the way. Gotcha. A dying and a living process and transition into that next level of that, or that next experience in Christ. There's that transition period, isn't there? Yes, sir. And, I, and you know, there again, I can't think of anything that, that's ever been better than, than uh, coming to a saving knowledge of the truth uh, and being baptized in Holy Spirit. But, there, but certainly it has been, it has been enriched and, and has gotten deeper and more intimate and more, more personal. And, uh, you know, where it started out, I didn't, either, I didn't read a newspaper. I didn't read a magazine. I only had a King James Version Schofield Bible. And I read that Bible day and night for the first three years. And I want to I I say something. It was probably the best thing that I ever did. But uh, I was one of these uh, impetuous young leaders. <laughs> I'll just say, uh, after I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it would have been better to cage me somewhere for about two or three years. But I was uh, I was so impetuous that when I read about Peter walking on the water, I was working 110 miles offshore on an 87 foot motor vessel swall, and I went and slung my leg over the side of that boat, and I said, "Lord, I'm about to walk on this water." <laughs> That's the honest truth. And he well, said, "I didn't." He said, "I didn't bid you to come." 
Oh, wow. That's a good word right there. I did. I was going to ask you how that turned out, but you just told me a real spiritual key. He didn't bid you to come the way he did the Apostle Peter, right? I wasn't asking him to. So, you know, there were there was. I was reacting to what I was reading in, in excitement, enthusiasm, and zeal. And I said, I said, if, the, if Peter can walk on the water, certainly I can walk on the water. But when I flung my leg over that boat, uh, I had this sense come over me that I was going to become fish food if I went into that water. <laughs> well, we're, <laughs> we're chuckling here over that, but I'd rather see someone overzealous about the Word of God than someone that was cold and lukewarm any day. Well, I'm, 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 I'm thankful that, uh, you know, we've, we've grown and developed and matured a little bit in our understanding. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, and, and, thank you, and thank him for the many multiple times he saved my life. Gotcha. Well, I do want to ask you <clears throat> on one of your cards, a kingdom equation, apostolic kingdom alliance. And I see the words agreement. And I like that agreement, alignment. I talk about alignment a lot recently. But I see agreement, alignment, allegiance, and advancement. Talk to us about those words, if you would. That's just a, that's, that's, I guess it'd be a tagline uh, of Apostolic Kingdom uh, Alliance. It would certainly be um, an understanding we have of relationship after 50 years. And I've got some lifelong relationships that are in a various states various various stages of passing and uh it just reminds us of how not only valuable they've been but how important this first continue to pursue relationship and so when and when it comes to relationship what we believe we believe that all relationship starts with fellowship and from there it can become a real spiritual connection it can become ordained covenantal relationship it can become family it can become whatever Holy Spirit designs it to become, mm -hmm. but uh, all relationship starts with fellowship, and we can fellowship one another uh, uh, really without it being about doctrine and theology. We can yeah. just fellowship one another because we love the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I agree entirely. You know, I was raised in an environment where there had to be unity of faith, which is a, a misnomer. I don't know anyone that agrees on every jot and every tittle, but basically in, in our denomination, we didn't relate with anyone that didn't uh, see everything just the way we saw it. And I was surprised when I went to El Salvador to visit some missionaries and do some conferences down there. The, um, the, the lead missionary was um, having lunch and fellowshipping with the Methodist pastor and the Presbyterian pastor and the Methodist pastor and he quickly explained to me, well, you know, we just don't have much fellowship down here. And so, you know, but we are Christians. And so we do have some things in common. And he was eating and fellowshipping with people he never would have in the States. And I thought, yeah. what an example to us that we need to focus on what we agree on and what we disagree on uh, more than we what we disagree on. But because of their surroundings and issues, they found they needed each other in that environment. Now, I believe we can fellowship around the essentials of the gospel, and it, and it really starts with, uh, I choose not to know anything among us except Messiah and him crucified. And uh, the non-essentials, uh, we can work through those with some love and grace and understanding. But the, the truth is, is that if we don't, if we're not willing to fellowship one another based on our commonalities, we more than likely won't develop deeper relationships based on our differences. But also, we need to we need to even be able to love one another beyond our differences until we can celebrate our differences. Absolutely. You're exactly right. I appreciate that. So as I was saying, uh, your byline is agreement and then alignment and then alliance. Uh, well, we got to find points of agreement. I'll just specifically speak to that that equation. Okay. It's an equation I believe Holy Spirit gave me okay. uh, to represent what we represent. Mm -hmm. But uh, finding finding a point of agreement leads to a better alignment. Uh, if you know anything about the alignment on the front end of your vehicle or any vehicle, it uh, it, it it creates a situation where your car or your vehicle will go down the road more straight without a lot of stress. If it's if the can if the camber's out or in, if the toe's in or out, 
it'll start wearing on the tire. So you can wear your tires, wear your vehicle out. If your front end's out of line, completely wear your front end out. Yeah. And so uh, when I when I see when I see alignment, I think of alignment of the of the wheels on my vehicle, but I also think of uh, of what it means to be aligned spiritually. A catartismos is the Greek word for what we actually do in the apostolic ministry. We uh, not only do we mend nets and repair of uh, people's lives. It's like in chiropractic. There's a there's some 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 uh, professional adjustments that have to be taken taking place for an alignment of your of your members to take okay. place. So in the apostolic, Absolutely. we're kind of making adjustments, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of helping people find their place yeah. in the body of Christ as well as the kingdom. And then let's move on to uh, from agreement and alignment to to uh, alliance. You can't you can't form an alliance with people that are um, basically opposed to what you represent or in disagreement with what you're doing. You can only form alliances with people who have commonalities of goals and interests, and they also uh, have come into agreement and are more aligned. And then the alliance that takes place is for a greater kingdom purpose. Outstanding. I like that. Well, if we have a heart for Messiah's purpose in the earth and in the heavenlies and locally and globally, then our hearts are knit together around that purpose and the body begins to make increase of itself through love. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm not saying that, uh, that, that we, uh, that we should exclude anyone from the love of God or from the potential of salvation. Right. Should, we should, or should we should turn our back on someone just because they don't agree with everything we represent. But the truth is, is that that there's people coming along in the ecclesia and kingdom, and they're in different timelines and spiritual dimensions. It's not my responsibility to blow their ship out of the water by firing across their bow or, or cause them to stumble because of my revelation and, and my understanding. And, and really, if we don't learn to love one another, right where we're at for who we are, it's going to be difficult for us to align and to form alliances in the in the future. And if we don't agree, if we don't align and we don't form alliances, there will be no kingdom advancement in our locales and regions. And I know, and I mean, this don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying when I say this. I am an, I have internationally traveled. I have nationally traveled. I have I have I have traveled back and forth between states and and all of it's been good. It's been wonderful. It's been glorious. But the most effective ministry that we have done is at the local and regional level through real relationships. Okay. And, uh, and and I say I say that a lot of apostolic ministry. I said that on a call this morning. Have you noticed that a lot of a lot of apostolic ministry is done away from the locales and regions in which they live? And I thought that apostolic ministry was going where you were sent. Okay. Uh, working where you're received and staying where you're loved, rather than always looking beyond. Wow. where you're living and operating. Wow. But, but, but old school apostolic is mission minded. And they're also, they're also, oh, oh, I'm talking, when I say old school apostolic, <laughs> the only thing that they had to associate with the apostolic was mission work mm. or, or church planting. Yeah. And we mm. have to move away from this concept of church planting and missions in order to fulfill the Great Commission in our own locales and regions. Mm. We have to move away from a recruiting and a crusading mentality and really get down to business, understanding that our apostolic work is where we've been sent. And like my old apostle brother, William B. Brown, used to say, whatever field you find yourself sewn into, that is your field of ministry. Mm. Wow. Wow. Well, so there certainly is a call for us to be faithful where we're planted. We can bloom. And I found that we have a, a love for the people and a love for the area where we're sent. Isn't that remarkable? 
And I, I don't know any other way to do it. I don't want to just live in East Texas and eat good barbecue and experience all the different weather. I really want to, I really want to serve this community. And I am living in a the boondocks compared to most people that you've probably interviewed. We live from um, all probably seven and a half miles from a major highway, and this, you can almost hear the stars at night. That's how deep into the country we are. And I am surrounded by brothers of color with whom uh, I have become acquainted over the last year and a half. And uh, my neighbor, my next door neighbor's actually been to a Higginbotham House uh, grill dishes cookout and gathering that we've hosted. We've now hosted three. We're going we're to host the fourth one on the uh, 25th of July, of, of, excuse me, 25th of June between two and seven. And like I say, the last one, we had three states represented. My next door neighbor came. Uh, my neck, my across the street neighbor is in his 80s and he brings me watermelon and I bring them fresh vegetables from each Texas food bank. In other words, apostolic work and ministry is not just going somewhere new uh, and preaching for two or three days or even for a service and then coming back home. Apostolic ministry is living among his people and imparting the ways of life to his sons. Outstanding. Well, I'm seeing here the family gathering, H-O-M-E, House of Messiah's Ecclesia, home, House of Messiah's Ecclesia, a place of the power of his presence. And you have a meeting every Saturday at noon um, on uh, aka for you info and hosted by Blake Hickenbottom. Tell us about that. And then I'm in, I'm intrigued by this gathering that you have. Um, uh, five years, five years ago, I discovered Zoom before the pandemic. Okay. And before, <laughs> uh, before the, and before everything else, monkeypox. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I, I, I found Zoom and began to host a call at that time called We Are One. Okay. Well, after, a se- after a season of uh, We Are One and trying to teach people how to be in the same room at the same time without uh, entering into debate and argument, argument and attacking one another on the phone call, uh, I said, listen, we're going to create a safe place You've got your own room. We've got our own room, but we're all in one big room. And I want you to look at this as an opportunity to to uh, share your heart and to uh, and it can be in the form of psalm, hymn, spiritual, spiritual song. It can be in the form of prophetic word. It can be in the form of uh, just encouragement. It can be in the form of sharing a, a victory report. That's what we used to call it in the old days. But we, what we are, one thing we are not going to do is we're not going to preach to one another, and then when we hear something we disagree with, openly disagree with it. If you can stand, if you can stay on the call, uh, you know, and you can continue to love one another and continue to develop relationships beyond this call, then I said you're going to be a great fit for this call. So we moved from we are one to uh, home family gathering is what Holy Spirit spoke to me, and that's why He sent us to East Texas is because we, and we fully will intend with, with his grace and provision and with his direction, we fully will intend to pioneer a authentic apostolic resource center that is uh, administrated and governed by a uh, plurality of leadership and overseen by uh, apostles and prophets that are relating even outside of the local work. Uh, the regional work, if I can establish the kinds of relationships that I'm talking about, then there will be a plurality of leadership available. I already have a ministry and team that's with me, and I have oversight right here. Uh, When I say oversight, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, them watching my ever move or, or wanting a financial accountability on a monthly basis or anything like that. But when I say oversight, they're watching my back. They serve as advisors, and they can. And if I if there's a if, if I've got a blind spot, they can point that out to me. 
And I've got three right here locally uh, in my team that provide that oversight. Then I have three or four more men, Cleve Sharp being one of them, Don Atkin being another, and Richard Ham. And, and, and hopefully, as soon as I can talk to Jim about it, I intend to ask Jim to be a brother that watches my back and, uh, and cares for my soul and allows me the opportunity to, from time to time, to, to call him and vent and share my heart with him. Absolutely. Well, you can't do better than Jim Beckton. We mentioned his name earlier today, and he truly is uh, a father. He's a pastor to pastors. I see him regularly traveling, ministering, caring, calling, and it's my joy to be with him about three times a month because we live near nearby. But we have about a, a minute and a half left. Uh, just let me ask for clarity about the meetings, and then let's talk about your music and books. But you have this um, delicious home cooking. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, uh, we have found that uh, actually more can be accomplished uh, sitting across a table from one person, two people, or a small group of people in a restaurant than has been accomplished in most of 50 years through uh, pulpit ministry. And so uh, what I, what we do is, is, is of greater value and importance to the body of Messiah than just me going and, uh, and uh, preaching uh, one meeting or preaching a series of meetings. Uh, not that I'm not willing to do so, right. but I'm saying, I'm saying as it pertains to the value that we bring to the table and uh, what we bring to the table is for someone else. It's not about how it makes us feel to contribute it. If we can all remember that, then he'll use us more along these lines. But uh, the Higginbotham House Grillicious Cookout is what we, we've, this is our fourth one. And like I say, it's what we do on a quarterly basis. Okay. And uh, what we do on a weekly basis is our Zoom call. And what we do in between that time is we're pursuing relationship with other people. Gotcha. But I, I, I did. I know we're running out of time, but I, and I didn't say anything about my music. I didn't say anything about my books. I have over 100 published songs available through both of my websites. And I had, and it's music that's ranged all the way from the eighties till now and all the way back again. I've sung every kind of genre, including more, more than, more than 50% of my music is original music. The rest of it is everything from love songs to, to oldies, but to vintage songs, to uh, gospel songs, to, to Southern gospel songs, to hymns. And it's all available through my website. So we posted okay. at the end of this uh, session I have 33 books in every in every format, both digital, print, and audible now. And audible is rocking. Let's talk. That's that's, that's the only way. I, I'm really looking forward to more audible books being uh, blessing the lives of a lot of people that don't have the ability to read anymore or can't read or don't have the time to read. Audible books is the way to go. Okay, well, let's get back together and have a second interview and let's talk about uh, what's happening with digital programming and audio books and all the things that are available. But Blake, it's been a pleasure to have you today. You're a minister, pleasure. you're an apostolic father, you're caring for people in your community. You're reaching out uh, by way of technology. Your, your books, your tapes are available. It's just been a real pleasure having you today. Thank you so much. Brother Larry, I so appreciate you allowing me to come on, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you better, brother. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, we must go right now. Viewers, thank you for being with Blake and myself today here on Best Life Interviews. We'll be back again soon here on Best Life TV Network. Hey.